I need to talk to you. I have nothing to say to you. How long is this going to go on? How long is it going to take for me to get over being publicly humiliated by the man I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with? Ugh. I don't know, Ned. You're the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. You figure it out. Nance. You let me believe that you're writing an expose on the killer that I put away. I was. And then I started looking at the facts. And, and then they decided to write an article about how I botched the investigation. I should have pushed harder not to use that quote. Lieutenant Ford acknowledged that Nancy Drew, the lead investigator on the case, got too emotionally invested and lost objectivity. My editor that insisted on using it. Yeah. That's how you tell yourself so you can sleep at night. Anna Finch's murder was so brutal. I, I wanted to try and get in the minds of the man who would do something like that. Instead, I... You slept next to me for six weeks while you got Dan Bennett in your trial. I know. I was there. You shouldn't have quit the force. I really don't want to talk about this right now. I need to get to work. Bess wanted a baby. A couple months before the suicide, Bess asked me to be a sperm donor. You know, she was sick of waiting around for the right guys, so she was going to do it on her own. She wanted to see if I was open to the idea before she approached you about it. I said no, because you and I were in a good place and it didn't feel right. And then she died, I, so I never told you. Are you telling me now? I miss her, and I wish I'd said yes. You know, maybe then Bess wouldn't be dead. There's a lot I'd wish I'd done differently, and I, I don't know. I probably should have told you about it, but Bess, when it happened, I probably should have just been more open with you about a lot of stuff. Okay, um, well, I, I really need to go now. There's one more thing. In the spirit of being more open and honest, I thought I should let you know that I'm bringing a date to George's wedding. And here's your salad. Thanks. Uh, hey, Siri. Um, I kind of wanted to talk to you about something. Do you have a minute? Okay. Uh, this is going to sound weird, but um, you have to wear a bra. Oh, um, <laughs> no, I don't. Actually, um, they just got to stay up on their own. <laughs> See? No, 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 no. Uh, what I mean is, uh, I mean, you need to wear a bra if you want people to take you seriously in this business. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't really want a career in television. <laughs> My parents just got me this job to teach me the value of, like, hard work or whatever. Yeah, the plan is just to uh, marry rich and design in handbag. Okay, <laughs> here's here's the thing. The way you dress is making people around the office uncomfortable. Really, who? Not me. Well, <laughs> I guess it's mostly me who has the problem with it. Okay, this is like, it's one of those like body image things. I read about those in Marie Claire. No, no, it's, uh, it's not that. Mm. Okay, good, so I was gonna say, you still have a good body. You could dress younger than you do. Well, thank you, but um, this is... Like, how did you dress before you were married? Uh, I'm not married, Siri. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. I, thought, I assumed that you had, like, three kids. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Are you divorced? No, no. <laughs> nope. Um, never married. No kids. Huh. Because sometimes you, when you come in, you have these, like, food stains on your shirt. <laughs> and I just... I assume it's kids. You know what? We can finish this later. 